chili in the microwavable pressure cooker. Um, this is the, the Tupperware microwavable pressure cooker and it should take about 30 to 40 minutes to do. So the first thing it, it calls for is a large onion diced. Um, so here's my onion. I put it out of our onion bin. Um, we've had it for a few weeks now and you can see that it's still fresh and hard. It's not soft. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut it and peel it and we're going to dice it in our power chef. And um, this knife I'm using is one of our knives and they cut very, very well. You'll see that all I have to do is just one simple cut. Now that the onion is peeled, I'm simply just going to cut the other end off. And what I'm going to do is cut it into quarters. One, two, three, four. And into our power chef and the blade attachment. And that's the one we'll be using for chopping up the onion. And it has that little safety thing on it so you know you don't hurt yourself and we're just gonna put all pieces of the onion in here and so you put the lid on just simply give it a pull. I'm gonna give it a few pulls here until it is the consistency that I would like my onions to be in my chili all right so I'm pretty happy with my onions a little thicker so you can see see them there um, so, in the base of the um, pressure cooker, I'm just going to go ahead and dump the onions in there to get all of them. So, I um, got the spatula out to kind of scrape the sides to try to get all the onions out of there. We're lazy in this household and we use minced garlic a whole lot. Um, it calls for two garlic cloves of mints, so I'm just going to do two half teaspoons of the already minced garlic. So then we need a jalapeno. The jalapenos I'm using, and I'm just gonna pull a few of these and put them in here. It calls for jalapenos minced. That's if you bought it fresh from the um, produce section. But we actually, we garden. And... All, right. All right, so um, we garden. We actually pickle our own jalapenos. So what I'm gonna do is just pull a few of these out of this jar and stick them in here. So you can see everything we've gotten there so far. Um, Next, we need a tablespoon of tomato paste. So you can see I have a little jar of tomato paste and this is our can opener. And then, just want to a tablespoon. So you can see I've got our tablespoon here and our can of tomato paste, which I just opened. And let's go ahead and get the tablespoon out. And add it to the bowl. Then we need a tablespoon of chili powder. Alright, so a tablespoon of that. Two teaspoons ground cumin. Here's our teaspoon and my ground cumin. We'll do this over the bowl. And a pinch of cayenne pepper. Alright, so like I said, it calls for a pound of ground turkey. We only have ground beef, and to, um, it does call for it crumbled. However, ours is frozen, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook it for um, 10 minutes, take it out, um, mix it up, see how it is, and then cook it for another 20 to 30, depending. Alright, so it calls for a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, so I just have two here, and um, I went through using this quickly earlier, so I'm going to show you um, how to use it on this can. As you, um, it comes like this and you split it open and you get it on your can like so and just twist. To get it off, you just open it and to get your lid off, just like that. All right, so there's one can. And then it also calls for two to three cups of low sodium chicken broth. So here's my chicken broth, our measuring cup. And here's one. And I don't know um, if you know much about our measuring cups, but they come in a set that has um, several. And they are both, um, they're designed for both lefties and righties, and they stack together really well. And they're embossed with the um, cup information on there, so it'll never scratch off. All right, so it looks like I was able to do about two and a half um, 
avoiding hitting the, the max fill line. And I just want to show you what it looks like in here. So you can see everything in there. And what we're going to do is go ahead and place the lid on. Now the lid has several safety features. Um, so to place them on, there's like two arrows right here. You line them up. Oh, not yet. No, twist this way. So I lined up the arrows and I'm twisting this way. And then I push that piece down to lock it into place. Then once it's ready, this little pressure thing will be up. I don't know if you can see it. This little pressure thing will be up. And then once it goes down is how it tells me when it's depressurized. So, with the lid on and locked into place, I'm going to go ahead and stick it in the microwave. I'm going to start with 10 minutes because I do need to break up the ground beef. So, here I am showing you that it is currently under pressure as it just came out of the microwave. And in this next little slide, you will see when it goes down, telling you that it is depressurized. We did actually cook this for about 35 minutes in the microwave with the frozen beef, and it did turn out just fine. Yeah, so the little dot is not up anymore, so that means it's ready. And twist. And what do we have here? 